Now, um, today I'll be speaking about what does it mean to be dead to sin? Dead to sin? Have you ever heard about that? The phrase dead to sin comes from the book of Romans. Romans um, 6, 11, where it says, Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be, uh, to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm, okay. Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin. Dead to sin. Here, the contrast is made that uh, to be dead to sin is basically to be alive to God, okay, or alive in Christ Jesus. And uh, those who have come to faith in Jesus are no longer allowed to sin, uh, allowed to, to, to have sin control their lives. Instead, they should offer themselves to God and uh, so that they can serve the purposes of God. We understand that uh, the Apostle Paul tells us to become a living sacrifice, okay, to offer ourselves, okay. Uh, let, let, let's just go and check um, uh, Romans 12, 1 to 2. Let me show you Romans 12, 1. Um, let me just put, yes, Romans 12, 1 to 2. It tells us, that uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable, reasonable service. Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is uh, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present yourselves as a living sacrifice, as a living sacrifice to God. Now, the phrase living sacrifice is a paradox because uh, sacrifices do not live. And uh, we are dead to sin and alive to God. That is what the Bible says. We, we should count our bodies as nothing, as if we don't have bodies anymore. We are already dead and we are living in heaven with, with Christ. The emphasis here concerning living, it's, it's, it's basically concerning living a different life as a result of God's salvation. We no longer have to follow the patterns of the world, but we should live according to God's will. And uh, to be dead to sin does not mean we are sinless. Because Paul made it so clear that he continued to struggle with temptation and sin himself. Paul struggled so much with sin. Do you remember in the book of Romans 7? Uh, let's just check from verse 19. Where Paul is completely struggling with sin. He doesn't say he's clean. For the good that I will not, uh, for the good that I would, I do not. You see, the things that I am supposed to do, I don't do them. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that, I will not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. And Paul, if Paul himself could call himself the worst, of sinners do you remember he called himself that he is the worst of sinners and if he could call himself this then we should certainly expect to continue our conflict with sin until we reach heaven in uh, Timothy 1 16 if I'm not wrong he says that he is the he is the the chief uh, actually is it, yes first Timothy First uh, Timothy 1, verse 16. Okay, it says, How bait for this cause I obtained mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all longsuffering, for I am a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. He's a pattern. He says that 
what suffering that you are going through paul is just is an example of what we'll also go through and he also told us that uh, i'm looking for this verse chief of uh let me show you you remember where paul said that is the chief ah yeah here it is he says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom i am chief and remember the other verse we have just read that whatever paul uh, 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 passed through is just exactly what you're going to go through so we need to be dead to sin we need to be dead to sin and that uh, this means that we no longer need to be controlled by our sin nature. Don't let your sin control you. Don't let sin be able to control you. This is what the Bible says when it says be dead to sin. Don't let it control any inch of you. But God be thanked that you are all servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. Being made free from sin, you became the servants of righteousness. Be made free from sin. You see, sin corrupts. It's just like when you see uh, 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 a certain piece of maybe an apple or some, some have you ever seen some meat which is uh, corrupt? You will see all the insects and everything trying to go there so that they can eat corrupt things. That's just exactly how human beings are. Where there is sin, they will flock there. Okay? They will flock there. And the Bible tells us very well, before Christ, we are slaves to sin. But now we have the master. So sin continues to exist, but we are no longer dominated by it. And we have to understand that as Christians, we will, uh, we will have God's spirit in us to empower us. However, we still face temptation. Satan is always speaking to our ears and telling us, do this, do that, which is evil. But should you conform to the ways of Satan and now you're saved? No. No. We can live dead to sin and follow Christ, knowing that our Lord Jesus Christ will one day remove the curse of sin all together. He promised us that one day he will remove that curse of sin. Let me show you where he promised this. He promised that one day, one time, and there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. You see what the Bible says? So, be dead to sin. Don't walk in the ways of sin. Be alive to Christ. Count yourselves as dead to sin. When, when Satan comes and he tries to tempt you and tell you this and this, tell him what? I'm already dead. You're talking to a dead man. And if you're there and you're not yet saved, please be saved. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He died for your sins. So that if you believe in him, you'll not perish, but you'll have everlasting life. Once you understand that Christ died for your sins, he became a living atonement for you. All you need to do is just tell Christ what you have believed. Just tell him, Jesus, now I understand that you died for my sins. You're buried and you rose again, as the Bible says. And my friends, you'll be saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can share to your friends, let them be able to hear the message. And also subscribe to watch more videos and hit the notification bell. Uh, so that we can always notify you whenever we post a new video. And also in the description below, we have uh, a couple of other channels that uh, uh, we post videos outside uh, YouTube and other places. Please go and check out and God bless you and have a good time.